If you're a fan of the NBA, it's pretty likely that at least once you've heard of the importance of versatile wings, and how they move the needle for teams looking to contend. These are usually players who possess multiple skills on both ends of the floor that allows them to just plug into any lineup or situation and immediately raise the ceiling. The most notable recent example came from Andrew Wiggins of the Golden State Warriors, making a large impact throughout the entirety of their championship run by shifting between roles and offering a level of flexibility that allowed them to match up well with whoever stood in their way. Every team that's competing to win looks for these types of players, and hiding in San Antonio is Keldon Johnson, who at just age 23 already provides a vast set of skills. Offensively, he's at his best as an off-ball shooter. He's got a relatively unconventional motion that hurts his ability to get good looks off with added movement or through tight windows, but as a spot-up, he's knocked down from deep. Last season, he hit over 42% of his threes off the catch, while landing in the 94th percentile in volume at just under 5 attempts a game. While he's not running around the court to generate these opportunities, he does do a very good job at positioning himself relative to where his teammates are, always making himself an easily accessible target. He has great awareness for when to lift or drop on the perimeter, allowing him to serve as a legitimate spacer, and he has amazing feel for moving into pockets, gaps, and other soft spots in the defense that make closing out a bit more difficult. For example, notice how when this two-man game gets initiated, he starts sliding up to the wing to fill that open space. His man has to rotate and tag the roll, leaving a longer path to recovery that results in three points. This one's a bit more subtle, but he again starts in the corner with his defender serving as the low helper. Trey Jones makes a smart cut that forces Ingram to hold his position, and Keldon takes advantage by sliding a few steps higher for more time on the release. You'll see the same thing inside the arc as well. He's great at floating into space for easy dump offs and cuts, and occasionally gets on the offensive glass for putbacks. Now, it goes without saying that there are tons of off-ball players who can replicate this style, but where Keldon separates himself is with his ability to put the ball on the floor and attack off the catch. On this one, he's again located in the corner. DeJounte isolates and gets his defender on the hip, forcing that help. Keldon shuffles above the break, where he can draw that longer closeout and destroys it by driving across the lane for a dunk. He's a pretty decent slasher in these spots. He doesn't have those quick bursts of speed or high-flying acrobatics, but his large frame, strength, and balance allow for a unique combination of power and crafty footwork that help him carve out angles to the rim. He likes to get bumpy in these spots, initiating contact with his shoulders and chest to move defenders off of him while taking long strides and stepping through gaps in the defense for more separation. You'll notice that although he's not moving at high speeds, he does decelerate really well, often going to this move where he pushes with the ball, gathers it into his off hand, and stops on a dime. He also occasionally uses spins as a way of freeing up downhill opportunities, which is usually setting up for a floater. This is a really strong shot for him, comfortable getting it over rim protectors or in traffic, allowing him to still do damage as a scorer when he can't get deep into the paint. On the interior, his strength helps him finish through contact at a pretty decent rate, although he does have a tendency to just throw himself into extremely tough layups without much of an outlet. His touch as a finisher is solid though, and his offhand is very strong, which does bode well for his growth, as does the level of comfort that San Antonio has with increasing his on-ball reps. Last season, they gave him a decent amount of handoffs and pick-and-roll opportunities, and although he didn't convert at a high level, the signs of improvement are clearly there. Now with the loss of DeJounte Murray and potentially tanking for what looks to be a pretty special draft class, I'm expecting even more. 
There's some clear room for growth in quite a few areas. For one, I'd like to see some more utilization of the mid-range area as a way to unlock his scoring. His pull-up motion is solid, and he's shown flashes of decent shot making in these situations. It's just not something he's often looking to do. I also think for how strong he is and how well he finishes through contact, finding more ways to get to the line could take him to another level, improving shot quality as a whole and boosting his efficiency. The one big question mark though is if he'll ever develop into a potent passer. I'm not expecting him to ever become a lead creator, but there's still lots of value in the ability to connect an offense while on the move or when capitalizing on advantages with those quick attacks off the catch. If these three aspects of his game all take a leap, we're talking about a really strong complementary offensive player. It's already worth noting that in a huge sample of minutes playing next to DeJounte in 2022, the Spurs had a near 116 offensive rating, and this is just a third year player. Perhaps what's even more intriguing is his play on the other side of the ball, and just how good he can get. But before we get into that, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis and the making of this video. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics to further guide your understanding of the sport. They offer talent grades on pretty much any aspect you can think of, and through their player profiles tab, I can easily compare them to other players around the league. Using Keldon Johnson's three-point shooting as an example, on this page I'm presented with various metrics detailing his ability to create and make these shots, along with how he stacks up against his peers. This is just one of the many useful tools found on the site that help guide me and many others through their analysis, and by signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription. I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested in signing up, and with that being said, let's take a look at Keldon Johnson's defense. I earlier mentioned that large frame and strength which are the foundation. He plants his feet into the ground, and he's essentially an immovable object, just stonewalling any attempts to attack the basket. He pairs this with a 6 foot 9 wingspan that allows him to pretty much switch across the board despite standing just 6 5. His low center of gravity makes him a brick wall in the post, and even if someone is able to bump him off his spot, he can recover with a decent contest and occasionally gets a hand on the ball with swipe downs. On the perimeter, he doesn't have the quickest feet, meaning shiftier guards and those with explosive first steps are able to get around him a decent amount, but his core control is phenomenal, moving his hips and adjusting his body well to close some of those angles. His strength does help him fight through screens, but there is some work to be done to his technique and decisiveness, sometimes getting blindsided or just not knowing what exactly he wants to do. For this reason, I'm not yet comfortable slotting him in at the point of attack, but do love him as a wing stopper for bigger creators. Away from the ball, he's not much of a playmaker at all. His hands aren't anything to write home about, he doesn't have great instincts for jumping lanes or quickly dissecting plays, and at times his positioning can be very questionable. That last point is something I think he really needs to improve on. You'll often see when he's defending the screener in a pick and roll, he just doesn't doesn't know where to stand, and he occasionally has these lapses in judgment where he'll make weird decisions. These areas do usually get sharper as young players grow in the league, and he has some other positive traits in these spots that I think can contribute. For one, he's very active, always sliding over to tag rollers, cutters, or turn away drives while leaving himself enough time to recover on the closeout. Take this play for instance, Keldon recognizes that this pick and roll has created a 2 on 1 advantage so he has to slide over to take away the roller. Instead of over committing and abandoning his man though, he lingers just long enough to force Schroeder into choosing the kickout pass and recovers to force a contested long two. And it's not like he's leaving the possibility to attack these closeouts either, because even with no momentum in his favor, he's not going anywhere. 
Overall, I'm not sure the awareness will ever reach that level needed to touch all defensive territory, but with that being said, he brings enough away from the ball that when paired with his switchable man defense makes him pretty deployable in tons of different schemes. When paired with his ever-growing off-ball attack and flashes on offense, I think it can develop into an awesome complementary piece, expanding upon the role of a 3 and D wing. I'm excited for this upcoming season to tell us a little bit more about how high his ceiling actually is, so make sure to keep an eye out for some Spurs games to make sure you aren't sleeping on Keldon Johnson. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website, podcast, and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Keldon Johnson and just how good you believe he is. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.